Hey, what's up everyone? I hope you are doing well. This is Jack from Byprogrammers.com and welcome back to a brand new episode of Let's Code React Native. In this episode, we are going to build a cool looking crypto wallet app based on a design created by Martin on marketapp.wondershare.com. In case you don't know, Market is actually a very cool and easy to use platform that has the ability to empower your UI UX design journey. And recently, they have also released two new tools which are the Design Tool that basically allows you to create pixel perfect icons and SVG easily. And also the Flowchart Tool that literally allows you to bring logic and workflow to your design. For more information, feel free to check it out on market.wondershare.com. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification for more videos like this. All right, now with that being said, let's get started. Alright, so for this project, we are going to build five different screens, which are the home screen, the portfolio screen, the trade screen. This is actually a bottom slide up model, which we are going to implement it later on. And followed by the market screen. And lastly is the profile screen. On top of that, instead of using dummy crypto um, data, we are going to get the actual live data from CoinGecko by using a library called Azios later on. So just like the previous episode, instead of just setting the project from scratch, we have actually prepared a star template so that it will be a lot easier for you guys to follow along. So go ahead, download the source code, the link is in the description below, and you should be able to get this. And as usual, the first thing we need to do is to open up your terminal and run npm install. After that, we will run mpx react-native link. And lastly, we will cd into iOS and run pod install. All right, now we can then CD back to the root folder and run mpx react native run iOS. Okay, so as you can see here, we have a very basic SAR template. We have the bottom tab navigator and also a few empty screens. Now, before we dive into coding, let me quickly go through what we have here in the SAR template. All right, so first thing first, we have the assets folder where we have the project fonts, which is Roboto. We have the icons that we'll be using in the project and the images folder is um, currently empty. So after the assets folder, we have the constants folder and within the constants folder, we have constants.js and here we have the market tabs and this is actually for the market screen over here. This one over here, all right? And next we have the dummy.js. So here we have my own holdings. We have the profile settings and that's pretty much about it and next we have the icons.js which basically includes all the icons that we are going to use in the project later on and lastly we have the team.js which includes the um, dimensions of the um, device and also the colors that we'll be using the sizes all sorts of different sizes and lastly is the fonts all right after this we have the navigation folder and this is actually for the bottom tab navigator over here and lastly we have a few empty screens in the screens folder okay so as of now we have successfully created and set up the basic structure of this project and the first component that we'll be working on is the bottom tab navigator over here so in order to achieve each of these um, tabs we are going to create a standalone component called tab icon so in the root folder create a folder called components like that and within the components folder we are going to create the tab icon.js so over here i am going to import from um, react i'm going to import a couple of components from react native over here we need the view we need text and also we need image we also need to import a couple of things from 
um, constants. So import from constants like that. And over here we need the fonts and colors. And now we can then create the tap icon functional component. So constant tap icon. I'm gonna leave the prop blank for now. Arrow function and over here I'm going to simply return a normal view. Oops. A normal view with a text that says tap. And don't forget we need to export default tap icon. Now before we can test if this component is working, we need to create an index file over here. And now we need to import from oops. We need to import from tap icon and over here it will be tap icon. And we need to export the tap icon like that. Now head back to the tap.js file and over here we need to import the tap icon components. So import from components and this one's going to be tap icon just like that. Now before we use the tap icon component, I would like to do a bit of customization on the bottom tab navigator over here. So head over to the tab bar options, set the show label to false. And I would like to also set the height to 140. Save it. All right, now in order to use the tab icon component for each of these tabs, we need to use the options prop just like this. So options, and over here we have the tab bar icon. We need the focus um, props, arrow function, and over here I'm going to return the tab icon just like that. Save it. All right, so as you can see here, the tab um, text component is actually showing over here. And now for this um, tab icon component, we are going to pass in a few props. So we need the focus like that. We need to know the icon and the icon for this home tab will be icons.home. And also we need the label. With these information, we'll be able to build the tab to look something like this, all right? And now all we need to do is to copy the options props and paste it for the other tabs as well. So for the portfolio, the icons will be briefcase. I think something's wrong here, let me see. Oh, so over here I need the icons as well, just like that. All right, so back to the portfolio and over here, the icon will be icons.briefcase and the label is going to be portfolio. Same thing, I'm gonna paste it for the trade tab as well. Just like that. The icon is going to be icons.trade. Oops. Icons.trade. Label is going to be trade. And since the trade tab is actually different from the other tabs over here, I am going to specify it by using another prop called is trade. And this one's going to be true. All right, so for the market tab, same thing. I'm gonna paste it like this and change the icon to market and the label to market as well. And lastly, for the profile tab, same thing. I'm gonna change the icon to profile and change the label to profile as well. So save it. All right, now we can then head back to the tab icon.js and customize the appearance of each of these tabs. Okay, now for this um, component, we are going to tag in a few more props, which are the focus, icon, icon style, label and is straight like that and over here if the tab is actually the trade tab so if the is trade is true then i am going to return something if it's not i am going to return something else so for now if it's a sorry if it's a trade button trade tab actually I am going to return trait like that. And if it's not, I'm going to return tab. Let me change the color as well so it's easier to see. So color equals to color is white. I'm gonna paste it over here as well, save it. All right, cool, so as you can see here, we have four tab and one trait tab, which is exactly what we want. 
So now we are going to work in the normal tab first and followed by the trade tab. Okay, so over here, we need a container view and we need to give it some styling. Align item equals to center and justify content equals to center as well. And within this container view, we have the image component and the source is going to be icon resize mode equals to contain and style equals to width will be 25 height will be 25 tint color if it's being focused then it's going to be white if it's not it's going to be secondary and I'm going to um, include the icon style as well just like that save it alright so we have the image in place next we'll include the text component over here so for this it's going to be label give it some styling as well for the color if it's being focused then it's going to be white if it's not it's going to be secondary as well and the font will be fonts.h4 alright save it perfect alright so now for the trade tab we need the container view as well just that we need to give it some styling the align items should be center justify content should be center as well width will be 60 height will be 60 border radius equals to 30 and background color equals to black and now within this container view we need the image component and the source is going to be icon resize mode equals to contain style equals to width 25 height 25 tint color equals to white and I'm going to include the icon style over here as well next I'm going to change this to label and the font is going to be h4 all right save it all right cool we have basically completed the bottom tab navigator okay so the next thing we are going to do here is the trade model so what happened here is that whenever we click on the trade button over here a model with two buttons should slide up from bottom and at the same time the rest of the tab buttons should be hidden the trade button itself should be changed and lastly the background should be deemed in other words, if let's say I'm currently in the home screen, once the trade button is being clicked, the model will be presented from the bottom and at the same time the background which is the home screen will be deemed. And same thing goes to the portfolio, the market and also the profile screen. And in order to achieve this, the first thing we are going to do is to create a root view called the main layout. So head over to the screens folder over here and we are going to create a new um, file called main layout.js same thing we are going to import from react we are going to import a couple of things from um, react native currently we need the view and also we need to import a couple of things from constants so we need colors sizes and icons and now we can then create the main layout functional component so constant main layout arrow function I'm just gonna return an empty view for now just like that and don't forget we need to export default main layout the next thing we need to do here is that we need to wrap the home screen the market screen the portfolio screen and also the profile screen within the main layout component the reason why we are doing this is so that we can you know present the trade model in the main layout component okay so for the main layout component we need the children prop just like that and for the view i'm just gonna give it some styling the flags is going to be one and over here we will render children all right next we need to include the main layout in the index.js file so over here i'm just gonna import from main layout this one will be main layout i'm gonna export it over here and I'm going to head over to the harm.js file over here I'm going to import the main layout or I can do it this way as well I'm going to import main layout from the current folder 
Next thing I want to do is that I am going to wrap this whole thing within main layout. Now if I were to save it, nothing should change. The only difference is that now the home screen is currently being wrapped within the main layout component, which allowed us to work on the trade model later on. All right. So I'm going to um, do the same thing for the other screens as well. So head over to the market.js. I'm going to import the main layout and I'm going to wrap this whole thing within the main layout component. Same thing. I'm going to do it for the portfolio and I'm going to wrap this whole thing oops, within main layout component. Alright, now profile screen, same thing, wrap it within main layout component. Alright, don't forget to save this as well. Alright, so the next thing we would like to do is to customize the trade tab bar button. This is so that we can handle the unpressed action and present the model later on. Alright, so head over to the tabs.js file and within the trade tab over here, we are going to customize the tab bar button like that. Arrow function. And over here, we are going to return a component called tab bar custom button. Don't worry, we are going to create this component later on. We are going to pass in the props and we are going to supply our own on press prop. So for now, it will just simply console log um, treat button, just like that. So all we need to do now is to create the tab bar custom button component over here. So constant tab bar custom button, we are going to tag in the children prop and also the on press prop arrow function over here, we are going to return a touchable opacity. Give it some styling. Flex equals to one. Justify content equals to center. Align items equals to center as well. And the unpress equals to unpress. And within this touchable opacity, we are going to render the children. Save it. All right, now, if I were to click on the trade button, it should console log trade button on the terminal. Great. All right, now we have most of the things in place to work on the trade model. Next thing we need here is that we need a way to keep track whenever the trade button is being clicked. And we can do that by using React Redux. So um, open up your terminal and run npm install React Redux space Redux and space Redux tongue. Enter. After that, we need to run mpx react native link. And lastly, we will cd into iOS and run pod install. All right, now go back to the root folder. Don't forget we need to um, close the app as well. Next thing we need to do here is that we need to create a store to keep track of the trade button over here when it is being clicked. All right. So go back to your source code. We need to create a folder called stores. And within the stores folder, we need another folder called tab. And now for the tab folder, we need tab actions and also tab reducer. These are basically just some of the boilerplate codes for um, React Redux. All right. So head over to the tab actions.js. And over here, we need to create a constant. So export constant set trade model. Visibility equals to set trade model visibility like that. And over here, we need to export, we need to create a function to basically um, set the trade model visibility. So export function set trade model visibility. We are going to pass in a param called is visible. And whenever this action is being triggered, we are going to dispatch, return a dispatch arrow function and over here we are going to dispatch the set trade model visibility success function by passing the is visible param over and of course we need to create this function over here so export constant 
set trait model visibility success the param is going to be is visible arrow function and the type it's going to be set trait model visibility and the payload is going to be is visible just like that so for the tab reducer.js we need to import from tab actions and we will import everything as tab action types and over here we will set up the initial state so constant initial state equals to is straight model visible and the initial state is going to be false and over here we can then create the tap reducer so constant tap reducer equals to the state is going to be initial state action arrow function and over here we will switch the action type and if the type equals to set trait model visible uh, sorry set trait model visibility then we are going to return state and also we are going to overwrite the is trait model visible to the payload so action dot payload dot is visible if it's not we are going to simply return the state just like that and of course don't forget we need to export default tab reducer all right next thing we need here is that we need to create a new file called root reducer within the um, stores folder so root reducer .js. and over here we need to import from redux and we need to import the combine reducers we need to import from the tab dot reducer this one tab reducer and over here we will export default combine reducers tab reducer all right okay now before we can use the tab actions and also tab reducer that we have already defined over here we need to sort of inject the store into the app.js file over here so we need to import from redux and here we need the create store and also apply me the way we need to import from react redux and for this we need the provider we need to import from redux thunk and for this we need the thunk and lastly we need to import from the root reducer and over here it's going to be root reducer next we need to create the store so constant store equals to create store root reducer apply middleware thunk like that and we are going to wrap this whole thing within the provider so provider like that and the store is going to be the store that we have created over here save it all right by doing so our app will have access to the tab actions and also tab reducer that we have defined just now all right so open up your terminal and run um, mpx react native run ios all right so everything is working perfectly fine the next thing i would like to do is that i would like to head over to the tabs.js file and i would like to connect the tabs component to our react redux over here so to do that we need to import from react redux and we need to import the connect and also we need to import the action so import from stores tab and tab actions and here we need the set trait model visibility action and now scroll to the bottom over here we need some boilerplate codes as well so function map state to props state return is trait model visible state dot tab reducer dot is trait model visible all right next we need function map this patch to props this patch return set trait model visibility 
is visible arrow function return this patch set trait model visibility is visible and also don't forget we need to export default connect map state to props map this patch to props to tabs let me see oh a bit of typo over here all right so basically what we are doing here is that we are getting the state from the reducer and also the action from the tab actions and inject it into the tabs component over here and now we can then access to the um, state and actions via the props over here so sit trait model visibility and also is trait model visible next i would like to create a function over here a handler function actually so function trait tab button on click handler this function will be triggered whenever the trait button is being clicked so whenever the trait button is being clicked i would like to set the trait model visibility equals to the opposite of is trait model visible and now i'm going to make some changes to the trait um, tab over here so whenever the tab button is being clicked i would like to call the handler function save it as of now you wouldn't be able to tell the difference but in fact behind the scene we have already kept track of the um, flag whenever the trade button is being clicked like that so the next thing i would like to do is that whenever the trade button is being clicked which is this button over here whenever it's being clicked i would like to hide all the other tab buttons so head over to the home tab over here within the tab bar icon property we will only return the tab icon if is trait model visible equals to false like that now save it okay if i were to click on the trait button the harm tab is gone and if i click on the trait button one more time the harm tab will become visible great so all i need to do now is to copy this and paste it for the other tabs so for the portfolio i'm gonna do the same thing like that um, for the market same thing and lastly for the profile same thing as well now if I were to click on the trade button all the other tabs will be hidden and if I click on it one more time all the other tab buttons will be visible great however there's a bit of an issue over here although by clicking on the trade button we can hide all the other tabs as you can see here the issue is that these tabs although it's not visible it is still listening to the tab press um, function or action as you can see the the label is changing over here and we do not want that so to override this behavior head over to the home tab we need to supply another prop called listeners and within the listeners we will need to include the tab press property arrow function and if the trait model is visible like that we are going to prevent default. What this means is that whenever the trait model is visible, we do not want the tab to listen to any tab press action by calling prevent default. All right, so now all I need to do is to copy and paste it to the other tabs like that. So portfolio, market, and also profile. Save it. And now you should not be able to change the tab anymore. And if I were to click on the trade button one more time, it should go back to normal. Great. Now I would like to also customize a little bit on the um, appearance of the trade button over here. Whenever the is trade model visible flag equals to true, the, the trade button, the icon for trade button should be um, close instead, right? Something like this. It should be close instead. All right. So head over to the trade tab, which is this one over here. And for the icon, if the is trait model visible equals to true, then I will use the close icon. If it's not, then it will be the trait icon. Save it. Now, whenever I click on this, it should change to 
um, close icon. The icon seems to be a little bit too large, so I can do this, icon style. If the is straight model visible equals to true, then I am going to set the width to 15 and height to 15 as well. If it's not, then it will be now. Perfect. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is to work on the trait model over here. So first thing first, we are going to create a standalone component for these two um, icon text buttons. Alright, so come over here, head over to your components folder and over here we need to create a new file called icon text button.js. As usual, we need to import from React. We need to import from React Native. For this component, we need text, we need touchable opacity, and also we need image. Next, we need to import a couple of things from um, constants, like that. So over here, we need colors, fonts, and sizes. Next, we need to create the functional component, so constant icon text button. And for this component, we need a few props, so we need label, we need icon, we need container style, and also we need the unpress function, arrow function. And don't forget, we need to export default icon text button as well. So over here, we need to return a touchable opacity like that. Give it some styling. Flex direction equals to row. Align items equals to center. Justify content equals to center as well. Height will be 50. Border radius is going to be sizes.radius. Background color equals to white. And we are going to include the container style like this as well. So the unpress equals to unpress, like that. And within the touchable opacity, we are going to render the icon and followed by the label. So over here, we need the image component. Source is going to be icon. Resize mode equals to contain and style equals to width 20 and height 20. So after the icon, we have the text component. Here it's going to be label. Give it some styling. Margin left equals to sizes.base and fonts equals to h3. Save it. And now we need to include it in the index.js file. So we will change this to icon text button and we will export it over here like that. Now that the icon text button component is ready, we can then head back to the, um, um, let me see, the main layout over here, we can then import the component. So import from component and here we need the icon text button. Now, before we can implement the slide up model, we need to first make sure the main layout component is connected to the um, React Redux. This is so that we can get access to the tab store. So over here, we will import from React Redux like that. And here we need the connect. And since the boilerplate codes is more or less the same, I'm just going to copy and paste it from tabs.js over here. So I'm going to copy this whole thing. We can get rid of this comment over here. And I'm going to paste it in the main layout.js like that. I am going to change this to main layout. Same thing, we are going to get rid of this. And we can get rid of the actions as well since we don't need them. All right. And same thing, we need to make sure the is straight model visible state is in the prop so that we can use it later on. All right, so we have everything in place. The next thing I'm going to do is to create the model over here. So I can do this model and we can do so by using the animated component like that. We need to import it over here and now I can do this. So animated dot view, give it some styling. So the position should be absolute. Left will be zero. The top property is what we are going to animate later on. So I'm going to comment this out for now. Width is going to be 100%. Padding will be sizes.padding. And the background color is going to be colors.primary. 
And now within this model, we will be rendering two icon text buttons. So over here, we will render icon text button. The label is going to be transfer. Icon is going to be icons.send. And the on press is going to be console log transfer. And over here, we need another icon text button. Label is going to be withdraw. Icon is going to be icon start withdraw. The container style is going to be margin top sizes dot base. This is so that we can create some spacing over here. And the on press is going to be console log withdraw. Just like that. Don't worry about the position of the model for now. We are going to fix it shortly. The next thing we need here is a constant variable that carries the animated value. So scroll to the top and over here, we will create a constant variable, so constant model animated value. And here we are going to use the use ref hook and the initial value is going to be new animated dot value zero. And here we need to specify dot current like that. All right, next we need to create the use effect hook. So react.use effect like that. And make sure we are listening to the is trade model um, visible state. All right. And now over here, if the is trade model visible equals to true, then we are going to use the animated.timing method to change the animated value from zero to one. All right, so over here, we are going to use the animated timing method, model animated value. Here we are going to set the value to one. Duration is going to be 500 and use native driver should be false. And over here, we need to call the start method like that. And if the um, is straight model visible equals to false, then we are pretty much going to do the same thing, just that the two values should be back to zero. Next, all we need to do is to get the output range based on the um, animated value. So over here, we can create another constant variable called model y, and we are going to use the interpolate method. So um, model animated value dot interpolate, and over here, the input range should be zero and one. And the output range is going to be sizes.height. And if it's one, then the output range should be sizes.height minus 280. And now we can then set the top property to model y. So um, save it. So if I were to click on the trade button, the model should slide up from bottom. Perfect. And if I were to click it one more time, the model should slide back to the initial position. So close it. Perfect. So the last thing we need to do for the trade button is that we need to make sure the background is dim whenever the model is visible. All right, so to do that, right above the model, we are going to dim the background like that. All right. So over here, if the is trade model visible equals to true, then we are going to render an animated dot view like that. Give it some styling. So we want to make sure this view is taking up the whole area over here. Okay. So position should be absolute. Top equals to zero, left equals to zero, right equals to zero. And of course the bottom should be zero as well. And the background color should be colors.transparent black. And the opacity should be equals to model animated value. Save it. Now, whenever the trade model is visible, the background should be dim. Let's see. Perfect. And whenever I close it, it should back to normal. Great. Okay, so the next screen that we'll be working on is the harm screen over here. Like what I have already mentioned in the beginning of the video, we are going to get most of these data from the CoinGecko API over here. And the API that we'll be using in this project is the um, coins slash market API. 
and whenever it comes to API call in React Native, our practice is always to call it in the React Redux actions. And we are going to call this API by using an awesome library called ASIOS. So scroll down and um, copy this, npm install ASIOS. You can use yarn if you want to. So go back to your project, open up the terminal and run npm install ASIOS. All right, now make sure you run React, uh, sorry, npx React Native link cd into ios and run pod install now go back to the root folder make sure you close your app as well and run mpx react native run ios all right now that we have already installed asios the next thing we need to do is to create a react redux store to work with the apis so head over to your stores folder we need to create a new folder called market and within the market folder we need market actions.js and also we need the market reducer.js so now for the market actions.js the first thing we need is to import from asios this is so that we can make api calls later so import asios from asios so for this market actions, we need to get two different things from the coin slash market API. The first one is holdings or my holdings. And the second one is coin market. So for this first action over here, what it does is that it will basically return me the data that is related to my own holdings. And we need these data to populate um, this section over here and also the portfolio screen, all right? And next, we need the second action, which is the coin market action for us to populate um, the home screen as well as the market screen over here, all right? So for these two actions, we are going to use the same API, which is coins slash markets from CoinGecko, just that the way we massage the data will be different. So if you like to know how the API response looks like, you can head over to the CoinGecko, um, scroll down until you find coins slash markets, click on the try it out button, and over here we can supply some of the parameters. For example, this one is going to be USD, and um, we, we are going to need the spark line, so this one should be true. The price change percentage should be 70, which means seven days. And now I can click on the execute button. So over here, you can see the request URL, which is this one over here, and also the response. I'm not going to go through all the properties over here, but what we are going to do next is that we are going to massage these data from the coins slash market API based on the actions that we have, all right? So go back to the source code, and over here, we need some um, constants variables, so export constant, get holdings, begin equals to get holdings begin. I'm going to just copy and paste like this. And I'm going to change this to success and this one to failure. After that, we have export constant get coin market begin equals to get coin market begin. I'm going to just copy and paste as well like that. And I'm going to change this to success and this one to failure. All right, so we need the get holdings function over here. So export function get holdings like that. And we need some um, dispatch functions for the get holdings action as well. So export constant get holdings begins get holdings begin arrow function. The type is going to be get holdings begin. And next we have oops, the bracket is missing out. So we need the bracket as well like that. And next we have export constant get holdings success equals to my holdings arrow function the type is going to be get holding success and the payload is going to be my holdings this is what will be sent to the reducer later on okay so lastly we have the export constant get holdings failure Error, arrow function, 
the type is going to be get holdings failure and the payload is going to be error and for the get holdings action we need a few parameters so we need the holdings itself this is actually referring to my own holdings and I have already included in the dummy data you can check it out if you want to and next we need the currency the default value is going to be USD and we need order by and the default value is going to be market underscore cap underscore description DESE DESE sorry and the spark line default value should be true price change percentage the default value should be 70 which means seven days and per page should be 10 and page should be one so next over here we need to return this patch arrow function like that and the first thing we need to do is to dispatch get holdings begin like that and now over here we are going to set the api url variable and we can actually get it from the constants.js file over here all right so you can simply copy and paste it over here make sure to include this as well all right and before this api url we are going to get the coin ids from our own holdings so that we can supply it to the api over here all right so let ids equals to holdings dot map item arrow function and we are going to return item.id and we will join it with comma like that so once we got that we can then return asios over here the url is going to be api url method is going to be get headers will be accept application slash json and over here we will get the callback response so dot then response arrow function if the response dot status equals to 200 which means it's a it's a success call then i'm going to massage the data over here massage data if it's not then i will simply dispatch get holdings failure and i'll pass in the response dot data and of course if there's any error so dot catch error we are going to dispatch get holdings failure as well like that and now over here we are going to massage the data by using map method so let my holdings equals to response.data.map item arrow function the first thing we need to do here is to retrieve our current holdings this is so that we can get the current quantity that we have like that quantity okay so let coin equals to holdings dot find a arrow function a dot id equals to item dot id and here we are going to get the price of the current coin from seven days ago okay so price from seven days ago so over here we need another variable so price 70 and a bit of mathematics over here so item dot current price this is actually from the api all right so item dot current price divided by one plus item dot price underscore change underscore percentage underscore seven underscore in underscore currency this one is also from the api as well okay so multiply by 0 0.01 so with this simple formula we can get the price of this particular coin from seven days ago all right so now we can then massage the data that we want so return id equals to item.id symbol equals to item.symbol name equals to item.name image equals to item.image current price equals to item.current price quantity equals to coin.quantity 
total equals to coin dot quantity multiplied by item dot current price price underscore change underscore percentage 7d in currency equals to item dot price change percentage in currency and the holding value underscore change underscore 7d will be item dot current price minus price 70 multiply by coin dot quantity and the spark line in 7 70 which means seven days and 70 will be this is going to be an array of value and we will generate this array by using map method so item dot spark line underscore in underscore 70 dot price dot map over here will be price and arrow function return price multiplied by coin dot quantity all right and once we have successfully massaged the data we are going to call another dispatch function dispatch get holdings success and we are going to pass my holdings over okay and now for the market reducer we are going to import from market actions and over here we are going to import everything as market actions so here we need to define the initial state so constant initial state equals to here we have my holdings which will be an empty array coins empty array as well and we have error which is null and also loading which is false and over here we can then define the reducer so constant market reducer equals to state equals to initial state action arrow function don't forget we need to export default market reducer as well and here we are going to switch the action type if the action type equals to market actions dot get holdings begin then we are going to return state and also the loading should be true if the action type equals to market action dot get holding success then we are going to return the state and we will override the the state and we will override the my holdings to action dot payload dot my holdings and if the market actions sorry if the action type equals to get holdings failure then we will return the state and also we are going to overwrite the error with action dot payload dot error and if nothing matches so default should be return state just like that all right, now that we have the get holdings API in place or get holdings actions in place, next we'll be working on the get coin market um, actions. All right, so over here we need the export function get coin market like that, and same thing we need three dispatch functions over here. So export constant get coin market begin arrow function. And here it's going to be type get coin market begin and over here we need export constant get coin market success and this one is, will be coins arrow function the type is going to be get coin market success and the payload is going to be coins and lastly we need the export constant get coin market failure this one's going to be error arrow function the type is going to be get coin market failure payload is going to be error all right so for the get coin market function we need a few similar parameters as well so currency equals to usd order by equals to market cap desc 
description spark line equals to true price change percentage equals to 70 per page equals to 10 and page equals to 1 all right so within this get coin market function we will return dispatch arrow function over here the first thing we'll dispatch is the get coin market begin then after that we will get the api url and same thing you can get it from the constants.js file over here all right simply copy and paste it in like that after this, we can then return ASIOS over here. URL is going to be API URL. Method is going to be get. Headers is going to be accept application slash JSON. Then over here, we will get the callback response. So dot then response arrow function. And if the response dot status equals to 200, we are going to dispatch get coin market success and we will pass response.data over and if the response state is not equals to 200 then we will dispatch get coin market failure and we will pass the response.data over as well and of course if there is any error dot cage error we are going to dispatch get coin market failure as well we will pass error over like that all right same thing for the market reducer we need to handle the coin market action as well so case if the action dot type equals to market actions dot get coin market begin then we are going to return the state and we will overwrite loading to true if the action dot type equals to market actions dot get coin market success then we will return the state and we will overwrite the coins to action dot payload dot coins if the action dot type equals to market actions dot get coin market failure then we will return the state and we will overwrite the error to action dot payload dot error like that all right now that we have all the market actions we need in place okay so we have get holdings and we have get coin market over here the next thing we need to do here is that we need to make sure the market reducer is being included in the root reducer. So over here, we need to import from market, market reducer. And over here, it's going to be market reducer. And we will combine it like this. Save it. By doing so, our app will now have access to both tab reducer and also market reducer. So now we can then head back to the home.js file. The first thing we need to do here is that we need to make sure the home component, the home screen is connected to the React Redux. So over here, we need to import from React Redux. We need connect. And I'm going to copy the boilerplate codes from main layout over here. All right, I'm gonna copy this whole thing and paste it in home.js file like that change this to home and we can get rid of this and now for the map step to props um, function we are going to need my holdings from state dot market reducer dot my holdings and we need coins as well same thing from state dot market reducer dot coins and for this we need to first import the market actions so over here, we will import from stores, market, market actions. We need get holdings and also get coin market. All right, now with that in place, we can then return get holdings. We need to include the parameters as well. So holdings, 
currency, pointless, order buy, spark line, price change percentage per page, and page. Over here, arrow function, and we will return dispatch get holdings and I'll simply copy and paste the parameters like that all right so after the get holdings action we need the get coin market action as well so get coin market the parameters is going to be currency pointless order buy spark line price change percentage per page and also page same thing arrow function return dispatch get coin market get coin market I am going to simply copy and paste the parameters as well like that and don't forget we need to include the state as well as the dispatch function to the props over here so we need get holdings we need get coin market and also we need my holdings and also coins all right now before we work on the ui the first thing i would like to do is to test these two actions over here and i would like the hum component to trigger these two api calls whenever the screen is being focused so to do that we can actually import from react navigation slash native and over here we can import the use focus effect and over here we can then use focus effect and it has to be accompanied with use callback hook so react dot use callback hook like that arrow function what this means is that the function within the use callback hook will be triggered each time when the home screen is being focused all right so over here I am going to first call the get holdings um, actions. I'm going to set the holdings parameter to the dummy data. Let me just um, import the dummy data over here. So I need to import from constants. We need a few things actually. We need sizes, we need colors, we need fonts, we need um, the dummy data, and also we need icons. So over here, we are going to overwrite this um, holdings parameter to dummy data dot holdings okay now to test it I am going to put some console log in the market actions .js. so over here I am going to console log get holdings and I'm going to console log the response all right save it and I am going to save the harm screen as well let me refresh this and from the uh, from the terminal as you can see here we have all sorts of different data from the api what it means is that our git holdings action is indeed working great next i would like to try the get coin market actions as well so get coin market like that and i am going to include some console log over here as well so console log, this one is going to be get coin market and I will console log the response as well. So save it and I'll save the harm.js file as well. And now we should be able to see the, let me see, um, that's a lot of data as you can see. So over here the get coin market and the response as well so these two actions are indeed working perfect okay so the next thing we are going to do is that we are going to start to work on the home screen over here so go back to the source code and over here we are going to get rid of this text component and i am going to give this container view a bit of styling so style flex equals to one and background color equals to colors.black all right and within this container view, we basically need to render three different things, which are the header section over here, the chart section, and lastly, the top cryptocurrency section over here. All right, so we have the header section, which is basically the wallet info, 
we have the chart section and lastly we have the top crypto currency section okay so for the header section we are going to render a new function over here so it's called render wallet info section and we are going to create this function over here so function render wallet info section like that so within this function we are going to return a container view um, give it some styling so style equals to padding horizontal should be equals to sizes that padding border bottom left radius should be equals to 25 because we need to create this curvy shape over here okay so border border bottom left radius equals to 25 border bottom right radius equals to 25 as well and the background color should be equals to color start great and now in between this container view we are going to render the balance info and followed by the buttons and for the balance info we are going to create a standalone component because we are using the same component in the portfolio screen over here all right so go back to the source code and over here we have the balance info section and followed by the buttons so for the balance info i am going to create a component called balance info don't worry we are going to work on this shortly so for this component we need the title which is this part over here so your wallet will be the title and next we need the display amount which is this part over here so let's say um it's going to be forty-five thousand, and we need the change percentage which is this part over here so say it's going to be 2.30 and i will give it a bit of the container style as well so margin top should be 50. all right so now you can then head over to the components folder and we need to create a new file called balance info.js same thing we are going to import from react we are going to import from react native and we need view text and image all right and then we need to import from constants as well so here we need these sizes we need colors fonts and also icons so now over here we can then create the balance info functional component so constant balance info here we are going to need some props so we need title display amount change percentage and container style all right and here arrow function return something don't forget we need to export default balance info okay so just to make sure it's working i am going to simply return a view with a text component that renders the title i need to make sure the color is in white color like that and i need to make sure i've included in the index.js file as well so i'm going to change this to balance info and i am going to export it over here save it and in the um let me see in the home.js file over here we can then import the components so over here we will import from components and we will import the balance info all right save it oh i think this is because i forgot to save the balance info file all right save it okay so as you can see here we have the balance info component being rendered in the home screen okay so now i am going to give this container view a bit of styling so style equals to which is basically the container style like that and within the container style we have basically the title section the figures section and followed by the change percentage section okay so here we have the title section we have the figures section and lastly is the change percentage section 
right? So for the title, the font is going to be fonts.h3 and the color is going to be light gray tree, like that, okay? And for the figures, we are going to create a container view with a bit of styling. The flags direction should be equals to row and the align items should be equals to flags and and within this container view we are going to render text component and this one is going to be dollar sign give it some styling fonts will be h3 and the color is going to be light gray tree all right and we need another text component over here as well and this one is going to be display amount dot two locale stream give it some styling fonts will be h2 and the color will be white all right i'll give it a bit of margin left over here as well so margin left equals to sizes dot base okay and lastly we need to render the currency all right so over here we need another text component that renders usd so style is going to be color will be light gray tree same thing and the fonts will be oops h3 save it all right cool so the figures section is completed next we'll move on to the change percentage section so for the change percentage section we are going to need a container view as well give it some styling flex direction equals to roll and align items equals to flex n and the first thing we are going to render here is actually the arrow icon okay so for this if the change percentage is not equals to zero then we will render the arrow icon so image the source will be icons dot up arrow and the style is going to be width will be 10 height will be 10 as well align self center and for the tint color if the change percentage is more than zero then the tint color will be light green if it's not then it will be red and next we are going to rotate the image to create the up and down arrow there are actually two ways to do this you can um, you can either transform it like this or if you have two image up and down you can actually change it from the source okay so I'm gonna do it from here so transform if the change percentage is more than zero then we are going to rotate by 45 degree if it's not then we are going to rotate with 125 degree like that so save it all right so next we are going to render the um percentage okay so over here we have text and it's going to be change percentage dot two fix by two decimal places percentage give it some styling so margin left equals to sizes dot base align self equals to flex n the color if the change percentage is equals to zero then the colors will be light gray tree else if the change percentage is more than zero then the colors will be light green else it will be red like that and the fonts will be h4 all right save it oh i think this is because I should pass a number instead of a string like that oops like that save it all right perfect and lastly we will render a hot coded label over here so text component and this time we will render a hot coded value which is 7 D change give it some styling margin left should be sizes dot radius Aligned self should be flex n. Color should be colors dot light gray. Tree, and the font should be h5. Save it. 
Alright cool, so the balance info component is in place. All we need to do now is to make sure the actual data is being rendered in this component. So to do that, head over to the home screen, scroll to the top, and over here we are going to do a bit of calculations. So first thing first, we need to calculate the total value that we have in our wallet. So let total wallet equals to my holdings, which is the one from the market reducer. So my holdings dot we are going to use the reduce method a b like that arrow function a plus b dot total if it's not a number or now we are going to replace it with zero and the initial value is zero all right so with this we can actually replace the display amount props like this save it let me try to refresh this as well Oh, the reason why this is not working is because there is a bit of typo in the market actions file so over here get holdings so instead of response.state it should be response.status same thing goes for the coin market action so over here we will change this to status as well so save it right as you can see the actual value is being populated in the balance info component so go back to the hum.js file and now we are going to calculate the percentage change so to do that we need to first calculate the value change over the period of seven days so let value change a bit of calculations over here as well so my holdings dot reduce a b arrow function a plus b dot holding underscore value underscore change underscore 70 if this is not a value then we will replace it with zero and the initial value is going to be zero as well and over here we can then calculate the percentage change which is equals to value change divided by total wallet minus value change multiplied by 100 and now we can then replace the um, change percentage props from 2.30 to percentage change save it great it's working all right so after the balance info section we are going to work on the buttons over here so for these two buttons i mean for these two buttons we need to make sure we have imported the icon text button over here and then we are going to render a function uh, sorry a container view like this style is going to be flex direction will be row margin top will be 30 margin bottom will be negative 15 padding horizontal will be sizes that radius and now within this container view we are going to render icon text button like that the label is going to be transfer icon is going to be icons.send and the container style is going to be flex will be 1 height will be 40 margin right will be sizes.radius and whenever I click on this button I will just simply console log transfer save it alright so we have it here we only need one more button one more icon text button and we are going to change the label to withdraw change the icon to withdraw as well and we are going to remove the margin right property and we will console log withdraw instead save it all right cool so we have completed the wallet info section next we'll be working on the chart section over here and in order to achieve a chart that looks something like this, we are going to use a very cool library called React Native Animated Charts. So scroll down and over here, as you can see, we need to first install the React Native Reanimated Library first. All right, so open it up and over here, scroll down and we need to install this React Native Reanimated at next. All right, I'm gonna use npm install. You can use yarn if you want to. So go back to your source code, open up the terminal, and run npm install react native reanimated at next. Okay, enter. I'm gonna close the app as well. 
and then go back to the documentation scroll down and we need to make some changes to our babel.config.js basically we need to copy this and pay, paste it in our babel over here remove this all right save it and if you're running on android you're required to follow these instructions accordingly if not you can just simply go back to your terminal run mpx react native link cd into ios and run pod install all right so we have successfully installed the react native reanimated library so go back to the react native um, animated charts and now we are going to install this all right so go back to the terminal go back to the root folder and run npm install um, animated charts all right enter all right same thing i am going to run mpx react native link i am going to cd into ios and run pod install all right so go back to the root folder and we can now restart the app so react native run ios all right now we have successfully installed the library and we can then move on to the um, chart section over here so go back to the home.js file let me hide my terminal okay so over here we are going to render a new component called chart the reason why we need to create a component is because we are using the same chart in the portfolio screen as well all right so over here it's going to be chart and this chart is going to tag in three props which are the container style and the margin top is going to be sizes padding times two Sorry, I meant two props. So we have the container style and also the chart prices. So for the chart prices, I am going to hot code it to coins. This one is from our market reducer. So coins, the first item in the coins, spark line in seven day dot price. Later on, we need to make sure these chart prices will be changed in accordance to the selected cryptocurrency. Okay. All right. So now let me close the other files. All right. And then head over to the components folder. And now we are going to create a new file called chart.js. Same thing. We are going to import from React. We are going to import from React Native. And here we need view and text component. And now we are going to import a couple of things from rainbow me slash animated charts. So over here, we will import the chart dot chart path, chart path provider, chart X label, chart Y label, and also monotone cubic interpolation. Okay. And we are going to import from constants as well, like that. Sizes, colors, and also we need fonts. All right, next we can then create the chart functional component. So constant chart equals to, we are going to tag in two props. So container style and chart prices. Arrow function, and don't forget we need to export default the chart component. So for now, I'm just going to return a normal view with a text component that says chart. I'm going to make sure the color of this text is white. Like that. All right, save it. And we need to make sure we have included the chart in the index.js file. So over here, we will change this to chart and export it over here. And lastly, we can then import it in the harm.js file over here. So chart, save it. All right, so the chart component is indeed working. So go back to the chart.js file. All right, now since the x-axis of the chart is actually the Unix timestamp, it will be a lot easier for us to deal with it by using moment.js, which is basically a JavaScript library. So to install it, simply run npm install moment, all right? So over here, I'm going to open up the terminal, enter. Same thing, I am going to run React Native Link as well, just in case. I will cd into iOS and run pod install. And lastly, we will close the app like that. 
go back to the root folder and run react native run ios all right now we can then import from moment we will import the moment like that okay now the first thing we are going to do is that we need to make sure we have the points to be plotted on the chart so to do that we need to first populate the chart prices data so let data equals to chart prices i need to make sure it's not null or empty so chart prices like that dot map item index arrow function and over here we are going to return two things we are going to return the x-axis which is the timestamp um, this part actually the timestamp and also the y-axis and for the timestamp we can calculate it by first getting the start of the unix timestamp so to do that we can let start unix timestamp equals to moment which will basically get the um, today's debt dot subtract by seven day dot unix like that All right so once i got it i can then populate the x property so over here start unix timestamp plus index plus one multiplied by three thousand six hundred like that and for y it's going to be item sorry this one's going to be data actually not date and if the chart prices is now i am going to return an empty array instead all right so after we have populated the data we can then get the points equals to monotone cubic interpolation what this does is basically to make sure the chart has a smooth curve all right so data range will be 40 and now over here i am going to get rid of this text i am going to give it a bit of styling which is basically the container style like that and now over here i am going to render the chart so if the data dot length is more than zero then i am going to render chart path provider like that and i am going to supply the data props so data inside we have points and the smoothing strategy is going to be bezier like that and within the chart path provider component we need to render the chart path so over here the height is going to be 150 width is going to be sizes dot width stroke is going to be colors dot light green and stroke width is going to be two save it all right so if you are getting this issue most likely you need to reset the catch so i'm going to close this app i am going to close this terminal as well and now i am going to run mpx react native start space um reset cache like that okay all right i am going to open up a new terminal and run mpx react native run ios that is weird i think this is because i need to install the react native svg library as well so let me try that npm install react dash native dash svg so i am going to close the app like that i am going to close the terminal as well and now i am going to run mpx react native link and followed by cd into ios and run pod install all right now we should be able to run our app so mpx react native run ios all right so we have the chart in place next we'll be working on the chart dot over here so to do that let me just hide the terminal after the chart path we are going to render chart dot and within the chart dot component we are going to render a container view and this is actually for the semi-transparent background over here all right so give it some styling position should be absolute left will be negative 35 width will be 80 align items sorry align items is going to be center and the background color is going to be colors dot transparent black one and within this container view we are going to render the 
dot so we need a container view for this as well give it some styling align items equals to center justify content equals to center as well width equals to 25 height equals to 25 border radius equals to 15 and background color equals to colors.white and now if I were to save it we should be able to see a dot being rendered on the chart as you can see here all right and because we need to render a smaller green color dot in the middle we need another view over here like that so give it some styling as well width will be 15 height will be 15 border radius equals to 10 and background color equals to colors dot light green save it now let's see if it works all right great next thing we need to do here is that we need to render two text components below the dots that we have just rendered right so the first text component is going to render the figures which is basically from the y-axis and the second text component is going to render the date time or oh, sorry the date actually which is from the x-axis over here so to do that we can actually over here underneath the dot component here we are going to render the y label and this one's going to be the x label so for the y label we can use the component called chart y label like that give it some styling so the color is going to be white and the fonts is going to be body 5 save it now let me try if it works all right as you can see here the chart y label is actually getting the value from the y axis of that particular point right and all we need to do now is to make sure we can format the figures so that it looks something like this over here okay and to do that we can make use of the format prop like that and we will pass in the format usd function which we are going to create it over here so constant format usd equals to value arrow function and here we need to specify it's a worklet like that this is actually related to reanimated so don't worry too much about it and next if the value is empty then we are going to return an empty string if it's not we are going to return a string interpolation of a dollar sign and followed by the value like that and I would like to fix it to two decimal places so save it now let me refresh the app let's see if it works all right great as you can see the dollar sign is being rendered and the figures are being rounded to two decimal places next we need to render the date time which is underneath the figures so to do that we are going to use the chart x label component like that give it some styling margin top should be tree color should be colors dot light gray tree fonts will be body 5 and i would like to override the line height to 15 and don't forget we need to format this label as well so format format date time don't worry we are going to create this function shortly okay so we are going to create the function over here so constant format date time value arrow function same thing we need to specify it's a walklet like that and if the value is um, empty then we are going to return an empty string like that and if it's not we are going to create a dead object var selected date equals to new date value multiplied by 1000 and once we got the date object we can then retrieve the date like that and over here we will combine zero with selected date dot get date and over here we are going to use the slice method negative two this is so that we can append the zero in front whenever it's necessary so after the date we are going to work on the month so month equals to same thing zero selected date dot get month plus one and same thing we need to use the slice method as well 
and once we got the date and month in place we can then return date slash month save it make sure to refresh your app like that all right let's see if it works sweet all right okay so we have the chart in place we have the dots in place as well together with the figures and date next we are going to work on the y-axis label over here unfortunately the library that we are using do not provide us the props to you know sort of like display the y-axis label and we can do that by first getting the mean and max price or figures of this particular chart and from there we can actually calculate these two points as well so let's see how we can do that over here right above the chart we are going to render the y-axis label we need a container view like that give it some stalling position is going to be absolute left will be sizes dot padding top will be zero bottom will be zero and justify content is going to be space between and within this container view we are going to trigger a function called get y axis label values what this function does is that it will basically return us the y label y axis label values all right so i'll create the function over here i can do this constant get y axis label values arrow function so here if the chart prices props is not equals to undefined then we will get the mean value as well as the max value from the chart prices so mean value we can do this mats dot min chart prices same thing for the max value we are going to use the math class as well so math dot max chart prices and with these two points we can actually calculate the mean value which is equals to mean value plus max value divided by two and with the mid value we can then calculate the higher mid value as well as the lower mid value so for this it will be max value plus mid value divided by two and for the lower mid value it's going to be mean value plus mid value divided by two all right so as of this point we got all the values that we need for the y-axis label just that we might need to you know format the number a little bit because the figures involved are quite huge actually so to do that i will create a new function over here called format number it will take in two parameter which is the value itself as well as the rounding point over here arrow function and if the value is more than 1 billion like this then we are going to return the value divided by 1 billion and i would like to fix it to the rounding point and over here we can append it with the billion sign which is b else if the value is more than 1 million like this then we are going to return value divided by 1 million and i would like to same thing fix it to the rounding point and of course over here we will append it with the million sign like this all right else if the value is more than 1000 then we are going to return value divided by 1000 and same thing fix it to the rounding point and over here we will append it with k else we will simply return value and fix it to the rounding point all right so we got the format number function in place we can go back to the get y axis label values function over here we can create a variable called rounding point and fix it to two and now we can then return an array of the y axis label so over here we are going to format number i mean we are going to call the format number function by passing over the max value together with the rounding point followed by the same thing format number the higher mid value followed by rounding point and now it's going to be lower mid value followed by rounding point 
And lastly, it will be format number, min value, rounding point. Just like that. And if the chart prices prop is undefined, then I am going to simply return an empty array like this. So now I know that this function will actually return us an array, we can then use the map method to display the values by using the text component. All right, so we can do this, get y axis label values. All right, I'm gonna call this function and the map method item index over here is going to be the arrow function and we will return the text component of the item like this. Make sure to supply the key prop as well, which is index and also to give it some styling as well. All right, so style, the color is going to be light gray, tree, and the font is going to be body four. Save it. All right, so the y-axis labels have been successfully rendered on the chart. All right, great. Okay, so after the chart section, next we'll move on to the last section of the home screen, which is the top cryptocurrency section over here. So to do that, head back to the harm.js file. After the chart section, here, we are going to render the top cryptocurrency by using flatless, like that. The data is going to be coins, which is the one from our market reducer. And the key extractor is going to be item, item.id. Content container style is going to be margin top 30 and padding horizontal it goes to sizes that padding and we are going to use the list header component prop to render the header label over here all right so i'm going to give it a container view and over here we need the text component that renders top crypto currency make sure to give it some styling for this, the margin bottom should be sizes.radius. And for the text component, the style is going to be, the color will be white, and the fonts will be H3, and I would like to overwrite the font size to 18. Save it. All right, so we have the header label in place. Next, we'll work on the render item prop. So render item over here, item, arrow function, and we are going to return a touchable opacity like this. Let me see if I've imported. Okay, I need to import the touchable opacity. I need to import the flat list as well. Let me get rid of this. And now that I'm here, I'm going to import the image as well. All right. Now within the touchable opacity, we are going to render the logo, the name of the cryptocurrency, and followed by the figures. All right, so we will render the logo. We will render the name and followed by the figures. So for the logo, we are going to need a container view. Give it some style. We will be 35. And within the container view, we are going to render the image component. The source is going to be URI item.image. And the style is going to be height 20 and width 20. Save it. All right, cool. So we have the um, cryptocurrency icons in place. Next, we'll move on to the name of the cryptocurrency. And for this, we need another container view. Give it some styling. Flex will be one. And for this, the text component is going to render item.name. Give it some styling for this as well. The color will be white and the fonts will be H3. Save it. Oh, we need to give some styling for our touchable opacity over here. So style equals to height will be 55. Flex direction equals to row. Align items equals to center. Justify content equals to center as well. And we are going to work on the unpressed prop later on. All right, save it. Okay, a lot better now. All right, next we'll move on to the figures section over here. And to make this easier, I am going to first get the price color at the top over here. So let price color 
equals to if the item dot price underscore change underscore percentage underscore 70 underscore in underscore currency equals to zero which means nothing changes then we are going to use colors dot light gray tree and if the item dot price change percentage 70 in currency is more than zero which means there's a spike then we are going to use light green if it's not then we are going to use red color All right now head over to the figures section over here we need a container view like this and the first thing we need to render over here is actually the um, figure the price so it will be a dollar sign followed by item dot current price like that and the style is going to be text align right and the color is white and the font is h4 save it all right so we have the current price in place and lastly we'll be working on the percentage so to do that we need another view over here and if the item dot price underscore change underscore percentage 70 in currency is not equals to zero which means there has been a decrease or increase then we are going to render the image component which is basically the arrow icon so source icons dot arrow sorry up arrow actually like that and over here we'll be giving it some styling so height will be equals to 10 width will be 10 as well tint color will be the price color that we have populated over here okay and same thing we are going to rotate this um, icon so transform if the item dot price underscore change percentage 17 currency is more than zero then I am going to rotate it by 45 degree if it's not then we are going to rotate it by 125 degree like this all right save it okay so we have the arrow icon in place and all we need to do now is to render the percentage over here so text and we are going to render item dot price underscore change percentage 17 currency and we'll fix the um, decimal to two decimal places and over here we will append it with the percentage sign give it some style so margin left equals to five and color equals to price color the fonts is going to be body five and I would like to overwrite the line height to 15 save it oh I need to add some styling for this all right so style equals to flex direction equals to row align items equals to center justify content equals to flex and save it perfect now we just need to add a bit of margin bottom so that the last item will not be blocked by the bottom tab navigator all right so over here i'm going to use the list footer component prop and i'm going to render an empty view with a bit of styling where the margin bottom equals to 50 save it all right it works now perfect okay before we move on to the next screen there is actually one more thing we need to do in the home screen and that is whenever i click on this um, particular cryptocurrency the chart over here will be reflected accordingly as well and to do that first we need to create a react state hook over um, here all right so constant selected coin set selected coin equals to react.use state and the initial value is going to be now and whenever i click on this cryptocurrency i would like to set the coin to this selected coin state so over here in the flat list for this um, touchable opacity whenever i click on it i would like to set the selected coin to um, this particular item all right save it and for the chart section over here whenever the selected coin is not now then i'll be using the selected coin 
dot spark line underscore in underscore 70 dot price like that and if it's now i am going to use the first object of the coins array okay so save it make sure to re um reload the app as well like that right now whenever i change the cryptocurrency as you can see the chart will be reflected as well all right perfect all right so that's all for the harm screen next we'll move on to the portfolio screen so head over to the portfolio.js over here and we are going to import a couple more things from react native so we need view we need text we need touchable opacity we need flat list and also we need image and after this we need to import from react redux as well this is so that we can connect to the um redux that we have already set up so over here we need connect and also we need to import from react-navigation slash native this is so that we can get access to the use focus effect like that and also we need to import from stores market market actions so that we can call the get holdings actions later on all right and after this we need to import from the components like that and we need the balance info and also chart component and lastly we need to import from constants and here we need sizes colors fonts dummy data and also icons okay so the first thing i would like to do here is to make sure our portfolio screen or component is actually connected to the I mean to our Redux store and to do that I'm gonna just copy and paste from the home screen over here like this I'm gonna copy this whole thing and paste it over here I'm gonna replace this the home with portfolio and of course we can get rid of this and for the portfolio screen we only need the my holdings state from the reducer and we only need the um, get holdings action so we can get rid of that okay so don't forget we need to sort of like inject it as a prop over here so get holdings which is basically this action over here and also the my holding states like that save it and nothing should change all right so the first thing i'm going to do is that i'm going to call this action or function get holdings so that we have access to the latest value from the api and since it is actually very similar to the harm.js, I'm going to just copy and paste it from here. And you know what? I'm going to just copy this whole thing because we need these values to work on the header later on. All right. So I'm going to copy this whole thing and paste it over here. And we can get rid of the Gitcoin market action. We don't need that. Okay. All right. And now we can then work on the portfolio screen. So the portfolio screen is actually quite similar to the home screen where we have the header section over here and followed by the chart section and lastly is the assets section all right so within the container view we have the header section which is basically the current balance and we have the chart section and lastly we have the assets section all right so i'm going to give this view a bit of styling so style flex will be equals to one and background color equals to black all right and the first thing we are going to do here is the header section over here so to do that we are going to render a new function called render current balance section and we are going to create this function over here so function render column i'm uh, sorry render current balance section and we are going to return a container view give it some styling padding horizontal should be equals to sizes dot padding border bottom left radius should be equals to 25 border bottom right radius should be equals to 25 as well and the background color equals to gray all right and within this container view we need to render the portfolio label all right so text component over here and we will render the portfolio give it some styling margin top equals to 50 and color should be equals to white 
fonts will be large title all right save it all right so after the label all we need to do now is to call the balance info component to render this part over here okay so after this text component we are going to render the balance info component the title is going to be current balance display amount is going to be total wallet which is the one we have calculated over here okay change percentage equals to percentage change again which is the one we have calculated over here and container style equals to margin top will be sizes dot radius and margin bottom is going to be sizes dot padding save it all right perfect okay so the next thing we are going to do here is the chart section okay so over here we are going to render the chart component like that the container style is going to be margin top sizes dot radius and for the chart prices same thing we are going to hot code it to the first item of my holdings first all right so zero dot spark line in seven day dot value and we will fix this later on all right and just like that the chart component is in place next we'll then work on the assets section over here okay so to do that we are going to use a flat list the data is going to be my holdings the key extractor over here is going to be item.id the content container style is going to be margin top sizes that padding and padding horizontal is going to be sizes that padding as well and for the list header component we are going to render um, two things over here the first one is actually the section title or sec section label then after that followed by the header label okay so here we have the section title and followed by the header label all right so for the section title the text component is going to render your assets give it some styling fonts will be h2 and the color is going to be white save it all right so we have the section title in place next will be the header label so to do that we need another container view like that give it some styling flex direction equals to row and margin top equals to sizes dot radius and within this container view we are going to render three text components which, which are the assets price and also holdings okay so this one is going to be asset give it some styling flex equals to one color equals to white sorry colors equals to light gray tree and next we have price give it some styling as well flex equals to one and color equals to light gray tree same thing and text align equals to right all right and lastly will be the holdings give it some styling as well flex equals to one color equals to light gray tree and text align equals to right okay save it all right great we'll now move on to the render item prop so over here render item item arrow function and we are going to return a touchable opacity over here give it some styling flex direction equals to row and height equals to 55 and within the touchable opacity we are going to render three things the asset the price and also the holdings all right so here we are going to render the asset the price and also the holdings so for the asset we need a container view like that give it some styling flex equals to one flex direction equals to row and align item equals to center 
Now within this container view, we are going to render the image component where the source is URI item dot image style is width will be 20 and height will be 20 as well. Now save it. Right now we have the logo in place. Next we need to render the name. So over here we need to render a text component and here it's going to be item dot name. Give it some styling. So margin left equals to sizes dot radius. Color equals to white and the fonts equals to H4. Save it. All right, so the asset section is in place. Next, we'll move on to the price section. And same thing, in order to make this easier, I am going to get the color beforehand over here. All right, so let price color equals to item dot price underscore change underscore percentage underscore seven day underscore in underscore currency. Now, if this is equals to zero, which means neutral, I am going to use light gray tree. And if item dot price change percentage seven day in currency is more than zero, then I'm going to use colors dot light green. Else, I'm going to use colors dot red. All right, now for the price section over here, we need another container view. Give it some style. Flex equals to one. Justify content equals to center. Now over here, the first thing we need to render is the current price. Okay. So text component dollar sign and we will render item dot current price dot to locale string. Give it some styling. Text align equals to right. Color equals to white. Fonts equals to H4. And I would like to overwrite the line height to 15. All right, save it. Oh, and all we need to do to fix the placement issue is to make sure the holding section has a view with the style Oops, if the style of flex equals to one, like that, okay? And now over here in the price section, after the current price, we are going to render the percentage, okay? So to do that, we need another container view. Give it some style. Flex direction equals to row. Align items equals to center. Justify content equals to flex end. And within this container view, if the item dot price underscore change percentage 70 in currency is not equals to zero, then I am going to render the image component. Okay. Where the source is the up arrow and the style is going to be height will be 10, width will be 10 as well. Tint color will be price color. And I'm going to sort of like rotate the icon. So transform over here, if the item dot price underscore change percentage 70 in currency is more than zero, then we are going to rotate it by 45 degree. If it's not, then we are going to rotate it by 125 degree like that. Okay, so the arrows are in place. All we need to do now is to render the percentage over here. Okay, so text and here we will render item dot price underscore change percentage 70 in currency dot and we will fix it to two decimal places and we will append it with the percentage sign. Give it some styling. Margin left equals to five. Color equals to price color. And the fonts equals to body five. Oh, and I would like to override the line height to 15 like that. Save it. All right, cool. So the percentage has been rendered properly as well. Next, we'll move on to the holdings section over here. Okay. And for the container view, we need to make sure the justify content is center as well. Okay. So within this, con uh, within this container view, 
we are going to render a text component and it will render the dollar sign and followed by the item dot total dot to locale string like that give it some styling so text align equals to right color will be white fonts will be h4 and i would like to overwrite it to i mean i would like to overwrite the line height to 15. save it all right so we have the total figures over here and all we need to do now is to render the quantity and follow by the symbol cryptocurrency symbol okay so over here we need another text component that will render the quantity followed by the item dot symbol dot to uppercase give it some styling as well text align equals to right color equals to colors dot light gray tree and fonts equals to body 5 and I would like to overwrite the line height to 15 all right save it all right perfect so we have pretty much completed the assets section so all we need to do now is to make sure the chart will be reflected in accordance to the selected coin as well same as the home screen so same thing we need to create the react state hook over here all right so constant selected coin set selected coin equals to react.useState and the initial value is going to be null and whenever I click on the assets over here which is the flat list touchable opacity this one whenever I click on it I would like to set the selected coin to item all right and now for the chart section over here if the selected coin is not now then we are going to render selected coin dot spark line in seven day dot value if it's not then we are going to render the first item or the first object in my holdings array all right save it now if i were to click on this it should reflect accordingly perfect all right so after the portfolio screen we are going to work on the market screen over here all right so head over to the market.js file and over here we are going to import a few more components from react native we need v we need text we need touchable opacity touchable opacity like that we need flat list we need animated as well this is so that we can you know animate the tabs later on and this flat list should be horizontally scrollable as well and of course the tab indicator should behave accordingly as well okay all right so after the animated we need image as well and don't forget we need to import from react redux we need the connect like that and over here we need to import from stores market market actions and this one we need the get coin market action like that all right so we have the main layout and also we need to import from the constants so over here constants so we need constants colors fonts sizes and icons so the first thing i'm going to do is again to make sure our market screen is actually connected to our redux store so to do that i'm going to just copy and paste it from our home screen over here all right i'm going to copy this whole thing and paste it in the market.js file we will re um, replace this to market and we will get rid of this and for the market screen we only need coins we only need the get coin market action so we can get rid of this and now we can sort of like inject it into the market by using props right so we need the get coin market action and also the coins state just like that all right okay so the first thing i'm gonna do for the market screen is that i would like to trigger the get coin market action by using the use effect hook in order to get the latest data from the api all right so over here react.use effect like that and i'm gonna call get coin market action all right and after this we can start to work in the market ui so for the market screen we have the header bar 
followed by the tab bar and a few buttons over here and lastly we have the market list all right so go back to the source code for this container view i'm gonna give it a bit of styling so flex equals to one background color equals to colors dot black i'm gonna get rid of this text component and within the container view we are going to render the header bar over here the tab bar buttons and lastly is the market list all right so for the header bar which is this one over here since we are going to use it in the profile screen as well i'm going to create a standalone component for this right so head over to the um, components folder create a new file called header bar all right same thing i'm going to import from react i'm going to import from react native and for this we need view and we need text and we are going to import a couple of things from constants for this we need colors we need fonts and also we need sizes and now we can then create the header bar functional component so constant header bar for this component we need one prop which is title arrow function and over here we will return a container view give it some styling height equals to 100 padding horizontal equals to sizes dot radius justify content equals to flex flex n like that and within this container view we are going to render a text component that renders the title give it some styling color equals to white and fonts equals to large title and of course don't forget we need to export default header bar as well like that okay all right save it and now in the index file we need to first um, import from the header bar like that and we will export it over here now go back to the market um, screen make sure we import the components from here all right so import components and here we need the header bar and now we can then render the header bar over here and the title is going to be market save it perfect okay so after the header bar section we are going to work on the tab section over here the concept of this tab bar and how we animate the tab indicator based on the flat list over here is exactly the same as how we did it in the previous episode which is the boba mute app for that reason i am not going to spend too much time explaining how to animate the tab indicator and so on and so forth so if you would like to know the concept behind the scene, be sure to check out the previous episode, which is the Boba Mute app. All right, so go back to the source code. And the first thing we need to do here is to populate the market tabs, which is these two tabs over here with the ref property, the reference property. All right, so constant market tabs equals to constants dot market tabs. Oops, market tabs dot map market tab like that arrow function and here we are going to return the market tab itself like that and we will include the ref as well so react.create ref all right so now we are going to render a new function over here and the function is called render tab bar and we will create this function over here so function render tab bar and we are going to return an, a container view like that. Give it some styling. Margin top equals to sizes.radius. Margin horizontal equals to sizes.radius as well. Border radius equals to sizes.radius. And background color equals to colors.grade. All right, so now within this container view, we are going to render a custom component called tabs like that. And we will create this functional component over here. So constant tabs equals to arrow function. And we are going to return a container view. Give it some styling. Flex direction equals to row. Okay. And now within this container view, we can then render the tabs. So we can do that by using the map method. So market 
tabs.map item index arrow function and here we will return a touchable opacity touchable opacity like that where the key is equals to market tab dash oops index and the style equals to flex will be one and i'll work on the unpress later on now within this touchable opacity we need another container view and this time we need to set the ref to item.ref and the style will be padding horizontal equals to 15 align items equals to center justify content equals to center as well and height will be 40 and within this view we are going to render the tab label or tab title over here okay so text component we are going to render item.title give it some styling where the color equals to white and the fonts will be h3 save it all right so now we have the tab structure in place we will work on the tab indicator later on after we completed the market list and now we will first head over to the button section over here all right so to do that we will first render a new function called render buttons and we will create this function over here so function render buttons and we are going to return something like that and for the button section since these components are having are pretty much having the same properties or characteristics i am going to create a standalone component called text button all right so head over to your components folder over here create a new file called text button same thing i'm gonna import from react i'm gonna import from react native and for this we need text and we need touchable opacity and then we need to import from constants like that and for this we need colors and fonts and now we can then create the text button functional component so constant text button and for this component it will take in three props which are label container style and on press arrow function and we will return a touchable opacity give it some styling align items equals to center justify content equals to center as well padding vertical equals to 3 padding horizontal equals to 18 border radius equals to 15 background color equals to colors.gray1 and we will include the container style as well and the unpress is going to be unpress. Now within this touchable opacity, we are going to render the text component. And here it's going to be label. Give it some styling. Color is going to be white. And the font will be H3. Don't forget we need to export default text button. All right, now head over to the index file. Same thing, we need to import the text button over here and export it over here save it all right then you can head back to the market.js file and make sure to import the text button from components like that and in the render buttons function over here i'm gonna give this container style sorry this container view a bit of styling so style okay flex direction equals to row margin top equals to sizes dot radius margin horizontal equals to sizes dot radius as well and now within this container view we basically have three different buttons all right usd percentage 70 and top all right so text button for this the label is going to be usd then followed by another text button and for this, the label is going to be percentage in bracket 70. And the container style is margin left sizes.base. And lastly, we need another text button component where the label equals to top 
and the container style equals to margin left sizes dot base. All right, save it. Perfect. So we have it here. Cool. All right. Next, we'll be working on the market list. And in order to render a line chart that looks something like this, we are going to make use of a very powerful library called React Native Chart Kit. All right. So scroll to the bottom of the uh, here we need to install react native chart kit i'm going to use npm you can use yarn if you want to and open up your terminal and run npm install react native chart kit next you need to run mpx react native link and lastly you need to cd into ls and run pod install all right and now you need to close your app like that and cd back to the root folder and run mpx react native run ios all right so in the market screen let me hide the terminal over here we need to import from react native chart kit and for this we need the line chart like that all right and now we are going to render a new function over here and it's called render list and we are going to create this function over here so function render list return and for this we are going to return an animated dot flat list this is so that we can animate the indicator later on all right so the data is going to be market tabs the content container style is going to be margin top sizes up padding and it will be horizontal because this is actually representing the outer layer flat list and within the outer layer flat list which is this part over here and it has to be horizontally scrollable inside the flat list we have another vertical flat list which we are going to implement it shortly all right so we need padding enabled scroll event throttle equals to 16 snap to alignment equals to center shows horizontal scroll indicator equals to false key extractor equals to item arrow function item dot id on scroll equals to again this is for us to animate the tab indicator later on all right so animated dot event like that native event content offset x scroll x we are going to create this scroll x later on and over here use native driver equals to false and for the scroll x we are going to create it over here so constant scroll x equals to react.use ref new animated dot value and the initial value is going to be zero dot current like that all right and now for the render item over here item index arrow function we are going to return a container view and i am going to give it some styling flex equals to one and width equals to sizes dot width all right save it and now we are going to create the inner flat list over here okay so we need another flat list And the data is going to be coins key extractor is going to be item item.id and for the render item so over here we have item index arrow function and we are going to return a container view like that i'll give it some styling flex direction equals to row padding horizontal equals to sizes that padding and margin bottom equals to sizes that radius all right and now within this container view we are going to render the coin section the chart section and lastly is the figures section all right so here we have the coin section line chart section And lastly is the figures section and since we need to get the colors and all that I am going to first 
um, get the colors over here. So let price color, same thing, equals to if the item dot price, sorry, price underscore change underscore percentage underscore seven day underscore in underscore currency, okay, is equals to zero, then I am going to use light gray tree. And if the item dot price change percentage seven day in currency is more than zero, then we are going to use light green. And if it's not, it's going to be red. All right. Now for the coin section over here, we are going to render a container view like that. Give it some styling. Flex equals to 1.5 flex direction equals to row and align item equals to center and within this view we will render the image component and the source is uri item dot image style is height 20 and width 20 save it all right so we have it here and it's horizontally scrollable as well as you can see here great after the image, we will render the coin name, so text component. And for this, we will render the item.name. Give it some styling. Margin left equals to sizes.radius and color equals to colors.white. And the fonts is fonts.h3. All right, save it. Cool. All right. And now we are going to work in the line chart section. So over here, we are going to render a container view first. So view like that. Give it some styling. Flex equals to one and align item equals to center. Okay. And now within this view, we are going to render the line chart. There are a couple of props we need to set. We need to set with vertical labels equals to false with horizontal labels equals to false as well with dots equals to false with inner lines equals to false with vertical lines equals to false with outer lines equals to false as well and for the data the data sets are data item dot spark line in seven day dot price like that this one should be an array okay all right so after this we need to set the width to be 100 height to be 60 and chart config because we need to customize the color and it should be price color bezier style is going to be padding right zero all right save it and see what we got here all right cool so we have the charts in place you can scroll like this as well perfect and lastly we'll be working on the figures section over here all right so for the figure section we need a container view as well give it some styling flex equals to one align item equals to um, sorry flex and justify content equals to center and within this container view the first component is the current price all right so over here we will render a text component and here it's going to be a dollar sign followed by item dot current price like that give it some styling color equals to white and font equals to h4 save it all right so we have the figures we have the current price over here next we'll be working on the percentage so after the text component we need to render a container view give it some styling flex direction equals to row justify content equals to flex and align items equals to center and now within this container view if the item dot price underscore change underscore percentage seven day in currency is not equals to zero then i'm going to render image 
where the source is going to be icons.up arrow and the style is going to be um, height equals to 10, width equals to 10, tint color equals to price color and transform if the item dot price change percentage seven day currency is more than zero then we are going to rotate it by 45 degree and if it's not we are going to rotate it by 125 degree like that save it okay so we have the icons in place all we need to do now is to render the percentage so text component and we are going to render item dot price underscore change percentage seven day in currency and we will fix it to two decimal places and we will append the percentage over here give it some stalling margin left equals to five color equals to price color and the fonts equals to body five all right save it all right perfect Okay, so the last thing that we'll be doing for this market screen is that we would like to have a tab indicator over here that will be animated in accordance to the flat list over here. And to do that, the first thing we'll like to do is to head over to the render tab bar function. And for this tabs component, we would like to pass the scroll X over as a prop. So scroll X equals to scroll X like that. And for the tabs component, we would like to receive the scroll X, okay? And now we would like to get the measure layout of these two tabs. So we can do that first by creating a state called measure layout, set measure layout equals to react.useState, and this is an empty array. And in fact, before we can calculate the measure layout, we need to first specify the container ref. So constant container ref equals to react.use ref. And we need to specify the container ref over here. So ref equals to container ref. And now before the return statement, we are going to use the use effect hook. So react.use effect arrow function. And over here, we are listening to the container ref.current. So now we will first create an empty array like that and market tabs dot for each market tab arrow function and over here we can measure the layout by using the ref so market tab dot ref dot current dot measure layout the container is the container ref dot current and we would like to get the x y width and height Again, arrow function over here, we are going to push into our array. So ml.push x, y, width, and height. So if the ml.length equals to market tabs dot length, then we are going to set the measure layout to ml. All right, now save it. Nothing should change, but now we are going to render the tab indicator over here based on the information we have gathered over here all right so tap indicator if the measure layout dot length is more than zero then i'm going to render a custom component called tap indicator and we will pass over the measure layout like that and also the scroll x All right, so now we are going to create the tab indicator component over here. So constant tab indicator equals to, we are going to tag in measure layout and also scroll X. And over here, arrow function, and we are going to return, return an animated dot view. Because we would like to animate the indicator. So now we'll give it a bit of styling position equals to absolute left equals to zero height equals to 100 percent 
width equals to sizes dot width minus sizes dot radius multiplied by two and I would like to divide everything by two border radius equals to sizes dot radius background color equals to colors dot light gray now save it and see what we have all right so we have the tab indicator in place all we need to do now is to animate it so over here we will get the input range it goes to market tabs dot map arrow function i multiplied by sizes dot width and the translate x should be equals to scroll x dot interpolate we are going to interpolate this animated value over here so interpolate we will have the input range and also the output range which is measure layout dot map measure return measure dot x and now we can then set the transform property like that and we will use the translate x all right save it and now the tab indicator should be animated in accordance to the flat list over here great all we need to do now is to make sure we can tap on the tab bar as well so to do that go back to the market component over here we need to first specify the scroll view ref so constant market tab scroll view ref equals to react.use ref and i am going to specify the ref like this in the render list function over here ref equals to market tab scroll view ref and here we are going to specify what's going to happen when we click on the tab bar all right so constant on market tab press equals to react we'll be using the use callback hook market tab index arrow function over here market tab scroll view ref dot current we would like to scroll to offset offset market tab index multiply by sizes dot width all right and now i'm going to pass this over to the tabs component like this and in the tabs component over here we need to include the on market tab press and lastly we will trigger the on market tab press in the touchable opacity over here so on press equals to on market tab press and I'll pass over the index now save it all right now if I were to click on this tab bar over here it should be able to scroll the flat list great perfect all right so that's all for the market screen and for the last screen of this episode we'll be working on the profile screen so go back to the source code head over to the profile.js and here we need to import a couple of things from react native so we need view text touchable opacity we need scroll view we need image and also we need switch and here we need to import from components and we need the header bar and also we need to import a couple of things from constants as well and here we need fonts colors sizes dummy data and also icons so for the profile screen it's actually pretty straightforward we have the header section over here and followed by the detail section over here all right so i'm going to get rid of this here we have the header and followed by the details now we need to give this view a bit of styling so style equals to flex will be one padding horizontal equals to sizes dot padding and background color equals to colors dot black save it all right so for the header we are going to render the header bar like this and the title is going to be profile save it sweet so for the detail section we are going to wrap everything within a scroll view so over here we will render a scroll view like that and the first component that we'll be working on in the scroll view is the email and user ID section. So over here, it will be email and user ID section. 
so we need a container view for this give it some styling where the flex direction equals to row margin top equals to sizes dot radius and now within this container view we are going to render the email and id which is this part over here and followed by the status the status will be over here all right so for the email and id we need another container view with a bit of styling where the flex equals to one and within this view we are going to render the text component and over here it's going to be dummy data dot profile dot email give it some styling the color should be equals to white and the fonts equals to h3 all right save it okay and after this we need to render the id so text over here um id equals to dummy data dot profile dot id give it some styling so color equals to colors dot light gray tree and the fonts equals to h oh, sorry body four now save it all right sweet now we need to render the status so over here we need another container view like that give it some styling flex direction equals to row and align items equals to center so within this container view we need to render an image component where the source is going to be icons are verified and style is going to be height 25 and width 25 all right so after this image component we will render the text that says verified give it some styling as well so margin left equals to sizes dot base color equals to colors dot light green and the fonts equals to body four all right save it perfect all right so after the email and id section we are going to work on the app section over here and since the section title is more or less the same i am going to create a component for this as well all right so after the email and user id section we are going to work in the app section and i'm going to create a component called section title that will basically tag in the title prop that says app and now we are going to create this component over here so constant section title we will be taking in the title arrow function oops should be like this all right and now we are going to return a container view give it a bit of styling margin top equals to sizes that padding and within this container view we are going to render the text component which is basically the title give it some styling as well color should be equals to light gray tree and the fonts equals to h4 all right so we have the section title being rendered over here and after the section title we are going to render the settings itself and since they are more or less the same i'm going to create a standalone component for them as well so head back to the source code and over here underneath the section title i'm going to create a component called setting and it will basically tag in the title for this it's going to be launch screen and the value is going to be home the type of this setting is going to be button the reason why we need this is because we have a switch type over here okay and whenever i click on this setting i would like to console log press just like that and now we need to create this component over here so constant setting we need title value type and also on um, press over here arrow function we will return well in fact we need to check if the type is button then we will return something 
and if it's not then we will return to something else which is an empty view for now so for this we are going to return a touchable opacity give it some styling flex direction equals to row height equals to 50 and align items equals to center the arm press equals to arm press and now within this touchable opacity we are going to render the title followed by the value and lastly is the icon all right so over here we need a text component that renders the title give it some styling flex equals to one color equals to white and the fonts equals to h3 all right save it okay so we have it here next we need a container view give it some styling flex direction equals to row and align item equals to center and within this view we are going to render the text component and for this it's going to be value give it some styling as well margin right equals to sizes dot radius color equals to light green tree like that and the fonts equals to h3 all right save it okay and lastly we need the icon so over here we need the image component where the source is going to be icons dot right arrow and style is going to be height 15 with 15 and tint color it goes to white save it all right so we have it here so all we need to do now is to copy this paste it over here and i'm going to change the title to appearance appearance like that value is going to be dark type is going to be button on press is going to be this console log over here so save it all right so the app section is in place next we will work on the account section so go back to the source code after the app section we'll work on the account same thing we we'll simply copy this paste it over here and change the title to account save it next we will work on the payment currency and also language so simply copy the setting and paste it over here so for this it will be payment currency us uh the value is going to be usd and we need another setting and this one's going to be language the value is going to be english save it all right and now for the last section is the security section over here so i'm gonna just copy the section title first this one's going to be security paste it here and this one's going to be security like that all right and within the security section we have the face id component over here so to do that we will simply copy this paste it over here we will change the title to face id we will change the value to hard code it to true for now the type is going to be switch we will leave the unpress method first and over here we need to specify how it should look like if the type equals to switch right so for this setting component over here so give it some styling flex direction equals to row height equals to 50 align item equals to center and within this view we are going to render the text component same thing which is the title give it some styling flex equals to one color equals to white and the fonts equals to h3 all right save it and now we will need to render the switch component so the value is going to be value and on value change we will get the value and call on press method like this all right save it all right so in order to make sure we can change the value of the face id switch we need to first create the face id state over here so constant face id set face id equals to re8.use state and the initial value is equals to true and now go to the face id component which is this one over here we are going to change this to face id 
and we are going to change the on press prop to value and it will call the set face ID to value like that. So whenever I click on the switch, this button over here, I will basically set the face ID based on the value of the switch. All right, so save it. Now we should be able to change the face ID like that. Great. So after the face ID, we have password settings. So I'm going to just copy from here like that. So we have password settings. Value will be an empty string. Type will be button. All right, save it. Okay, so we have it here. Next will be change password. So I'm going to just copy and paste it like this. Change password. And lastly, we have the two factor authentication. So same thing, I'm going to just copy and paste it like this. So two factor authentication. All right, save it. Okay, cool. Let me see. All right, it's working. Okay, I think that's about it. Let me quickly go through the app and see if there's any issues. All right, so we have the profile screen, we have the market screen. We can scroll it like this. This uh, tab indicator is working as well. We can scroll it vertically like that. We have the trade button that will show the model like this. All right, it's working. We have the portfolio screen where the chart is working. We can change the um, coin as well like that. And also we have the harm screen. All right, guys, we have finally completed this cool looking crypto wallet app based on the design created by Martin on marketapp.wondershare.com. Now, if you would like to support our work or if you're in a hurry, the full source code for this project is available on shop the byprogrammers.com and I have included the link in the description below. If not, that's totally fine as you can still achieve the same result by getting the star template for this project and follow along with the video. So if you like the video, we'll be more than happy if you can give it a thumbs up, comment, share it to your friends and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. I will see you guys in the next video. Happy coding. Peace.